video it's going to be another book sort of update book review monthly book reads type video i've not done one in a couple of months um so this culminates sort of a couple of months worth that's because i mean when i look at it like this it looks like i have read a lot but for over sort of two months it's not that much really so i have six books to show you today and uh, let's get straight into the it the first book is dear amy and i actually got this from our local sort of telephone box little mini village library and um this is written by helen callaghan and it's about a woman who writes an advice column and one day she gets these mysterious letters come through um saying that she is this girl called bethan who went missing many years ago and to be honest i read this end of uh july so that just shows you how long ago these books were uh read so i can't remember a whole lot but i did only give it three stars but it was really a two and a half stars for me it was quite disjointed um as in the writing aspect of it i believe she is an american author i think um but the book is set in britain and i always find that certain words really show off when the author isn't from that native land and for me it lacked that sense of uh you know real credibility to the character and you know the country that it was set in um yeah i can't really remember a lot but i didn't rate it very highly and i love thrillers and things like that and you know this sounded right up my street but um it was a little bit dark at times like the actual like events and plot lines so yeah i just wasn't that thrilled so this will probably go back into that little telephone box library and maybe someone else will enjoy it a bit more than i did next book i read totally different end of the spectrum this is the courage to care nurses families and hope by christy watson um uh, i gave this five out of five stars i really enjoyed it so she is the woman that wrote um, the other book um, that was very famous after the or during the pandemic, The Language of Kindness. Um, and whereas that focused more on sort of her later career and the pandemic, this very much showed her as a nurse throughout her entire career, really, um, from starting out as like a, a junior nurse, going around shadowing other nurses, going out in the field um going to people's homes being um community nurses and that sort of thing she really showed that domiciliary side and as someone that has worked in the domiciliary industry for eyes it was really i could really relate to some of the things that she was saying about going you know to people's homes and how it, it just takes on another level of how grateful they are for your service it talks about how she went into um, and cared for you know people with learning difficulties and um just a wide range of spectrum that maybe you wouldn't see necessarily if you go straight into you know hospital setting um there's that obviously that other side of nursing and um the medical field and she also talks about her own like struggles with having children and um adopting and it goes through that little process as well um she spent quite a bit of time sort of in um pediatrics and in like the NICU the next book I was a little bit on the field of and I think I only gave it three stars this is The Mermaid of Black Conch by Monique Roffe it's a Costa Book of the Year award um this is I believe set around in the 1970s in some sort of Caribbean island um it starts off with um a sort of a sailor man um who lives you know off the coast of this island he's a fisherman um called david baptiste and he comes across this mermaid and he kind of falls in love with this mermaid but it's not quite aerial looking mermaid like she sounds really like if you imagined a mermaid but not like a, a disney mermaid like a proper person mixed with a fish like who's lived in salty water for years like she had barnacles in her hair um like yeah i don't want to say like dirty and uh, because that's not the right word because obviously she lives in the water but like that just sort of unkept sort of look that real like rural 
look that she had that's sort of what I could imagine her to be like um and so it did attract me it took me a while to really get into this book and it wasn't until maybe halfway two thirds through that I really was feeling for the characters and had you know the empathy I was like rooting um for her name is Akeia okay, okay, yeah. Isacia I I'm not sure uh where is it that's her name so she's the mermaid um and basically these um american fishermen come along and they end up catching her and they take her back to shore and they tie her up and obviously david spots her and decides you know this is no place for a mermaid cuts her down goes and keeps her in in his bath and they sort of bring together this friendship um, and yeah, at times it was a bit sort of weird and it felt like he was a lot older than she was. So it felt a little bit like creepy, but I don't think there was as much of an age difference as I thought there was. So the speech itself was something to get your head around because not only have you got like the Caribbean, um, accent to sort of grip but obviously it's set in the 70s um but the mermaids parts are all pretty much sort of poetically told and very much read like a poem so obviously there's a whole aspect about um the mermaid being cursed and um you know it unravels about this curse as we go on and how she ended up becoming a mermaid it was interesting would I necessarily read it again? Probably not. So I'm probably going to give it into that little library as well. But I think if this is sort of like something that you would like to read, like this was a bit of a step out of my comfort zone. Um, it's not something I would typically go for. Um, but if this is something that you would be really interested in reading about and you like sort of the time period, the area, you like mermaids, this is probably up your alley. So getting onto the books that I've read most recently, I was sort of in a bit of a lull around that book and that probably took me the longest to read. Um, so yeah, the next book is Black Coffee by Agatha Christie. Obviously I gave this five stars because I love Agatha Christie's work. This is a really short book and actually it's based off of the play she wrote and um, I don't know if the play was called Black Coffee itself, but she wrote this play and then Charles Osborne came and he wrote it down into a novel. Um, there's some mixed reviews about um, people talking about Charles's writing and whether it's the same as if Agatha Christie had written it straight as a book. I really enjoyed it, you know, um, it is a Poirot book. Um, I couldn't really tell that much of a difference between if Agatha had read it compared to Charles but if you are a hardcore English major you studied English you could probably you know see the differences but this is a really nice simple quick like murder mystery type book set in a house if you like and then there were none you'll probably like this so um this inventor called Claude Amory um invites Poirot to come down you never you always know that's not a good idea and um, because he believes someone is trying to steal his formula and potentially trying to kill him you know for his money for the formula we don't know what um and by the time Poirot gets there this guy is dead and so then it turns to looking at all the people surrounding him his family the local doctor the random person that came by his um like secretary all those different types of people and then Poirot and um you know his sidekick Hastings they come and um solve the murder and yeah like I said it was really quick it's less than 200 pages so if you're looking for a small quick fast something to maybe dip your toes into Agatha Christie this is I would say it's a nice book to read um whether some hardcore Agatha Christie fan would say this is the first one to read maybe not because it wasn't technically written by her but it kind of was you know so yeah but I enjoyed it so then I was on a little bit of a murder mystery sort of kick and I started to read this this I purchased around my birthday this is MC Beaton Agatha Raisin and the Quiche of Death so this was really interesting it's the first one in the series which was fortunate that I just happened to pick it up the first one because I feel like that never happens I gave it four stars I enjoyed it I will definitely pick up some more of this series um it 
follows obviously um, a woman called Agatha who I would say is maybe in her late 50s. She moves from London where she was had a really good job in like promotion um, and public relations and she moves to this tiny little um, Cotswolds village where you know it's the typical sort of murder mystery midsummer murders village um very quaint everyone sort of knows everyone's business and immediately i didn't find agatha a very warm person and i think that's the whole idea is that she's not a very relatable person she doesn't really have any family she doesn't really have any friends and she's moved to this little village and she obviously wants to try and get in with some of the people in the village so she enters a quiche competition but she ends up going to actually buy a quiche and it turns out that this quiche ends up killing someone and that's where it unfolds with you know fingers pointed at Agatha and her quiche um she's trying to like clear her name and also you know like settle down in her new life in this like quiet little village um but yeah i did enjoy it um obviously i gave it four out of five stars but it didn't blow me away i thought maybe some of the bits were a little bit predictable and like i said agatha was really quite a standoffish character from the beginning and then the last book that i read was jk rowling's fantastic beasts and where to find them so this is obviously the screenplay based off the film i'm assuming the film came first and then they wrote just put it into a book I think um so obviously this is the first Fantastic Beasts film I read all of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child but I hadn't ever read the Fantastic Beasts and I've not seen the films either and I purposely was holding out until I read the books so I picked this up like one late afternoon and I think I finished the book by about 11 o'clock at night I could not put it down obviously it's not like page to page writing if you see there is a lot of sort of dialogue broken up um so it's really quite a quick read but i was just engulfed in it in in a way that maybe i wasn't reading the harry potter books just because i'd already seen the films this world was so you know i read the books 20 years after the films came out so i was already very aware of the characters the the place you know i've been to universal and seen it but you know fantastic beasts is set you know back in the 1920s around then um and obviously if you don't know it follows newt scamander as he has taken a trip to new york and while he's in new york one of his little beasts the little niffler ends up escaping and he gets you know tied up with this other guy that he meets their suitcases get swapped um newt has been spotted by this other um witch i guess um who works for you know the the basically like the u.s version of the ministry of magic um i can't quite remember what it was called um and so it follows him trying to get back all of his beasts um that have escaped out of his suitcase because this random guy he finds takes his suitcase by accident back to his uh sort of room and opens up the suitcase and they all escape meanwhile there's a lot going on about grindelwald and how you know everyone's like on the lookout for him there's this sort of dark presence going on throughout new york that you know the muggles are starting to become aware of and um so yeah it basically follows new and him working um to get all his fantastic beasts back but also them trying to under uncover what this mysterious darkness is I really really enjoyed this um I was able to really immerse myself in a new sort of wizarding world and um I have added obviously the Fantastic Beasts Crimes of Grindelwald book as well I bought I've just bought that off Amazon so that should come tomorrow um so yeah so those were the six books that I have read let me know if any of these sort of stand out for you as some of the books you would like to possibly read in the future make sure you, that you follow me on goodreads I always have my link down below um because that is where I first upload any like short reviews or like you can see what books I'm reading at the time how far along I am with them that sort of thing so yeah and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more book reviews or if there's a certain video you want to see a certain book review like in an entirety of anything um 
just leave me a comment down below and I will endeavour to get to it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you very soon. Bye guys.